my name is Mara Lenski Deegan, and I am the Associate Curator and Registrar here at the Charles H. McKnighter Art Museum in Mesa City, Iowa. And today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Hodros Geller. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about the WPA and um, its effect on art. So Todor Scheller was born in 1889 in um, what is then, what was then called the Russian Empire. And the place that he was born is now called Ukraine. And he lived there um, with his family. And his family was Jewish, and that was a huge part of his life, his faith. Um, and um, in the early 1900s, he decided he wanted to uh, branch out from the Russian Empire, so he, um, in 1906, moved to Canada. And he lived in Montreal for a time, and in 1913, he met his wife, and they were married. And then in 1918, he decided that he wanted to um, expand his artistic career a little bit even further, and he moved to Chicago to study at the Art School and the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, so, Tobro Schaller was mostly known as a printmaker. Um, a lot of his pieces that are in different collections around the United States are um, prints, um, but we do have a painting here. He was a painter as well. He also did other things like glass and photography. Um, uh, but one of the cool things I think about his printmaking is that a lot of printmakers um, choose one style of printmaking and then that's all they do, or at least that's what they mainly focus on. But um, Geller decided that he had some different interests, so he worked with woodcuts, wood engraving, and etching, and actually kind of messed around with some different styles to make his artwork uh, look a little different. Um, and of course, we have a painting, which a lot of people are pretty familiar with, um, the painting, uh, putting a piece on an easel and painting something uh, with uh, paints and a, and a brush. And so we're um, going to focus a little bit about on this piece today, but it is kind of interesting that he uh, dabbled in so many different artistic forms. So during much of his career, um, like I said, the, his Jewish uh, heritage and faith uh, had an impact on his art. And so he focused on that a lot. And um, one of the um, things that he liked to do was meld his um, Jewish faith uh, with what city life was really like. So kind of life in Chicago uh, in the modern times for him, which would have been in the 19 teens and 20s and into the 30s and 40s. Um, and what I thought is cool, he taught at the Jewish People's Institute in Chicago and at the Jane Addams Whole House, which is also in Chicago. And he was a supervisor of art for the College of Jewish Studies, which later became the Spertus Institute. So in 1926, um, Geller was one of the founding members of the Around the Palette Club. And they were a club that met in Chicago. And they liked to talk about um, not just art, but also um, different artists' views on what was going on in society and um, just the world around them. Um, and that's, that group kept going for quite a long time. In the 1940s, they did rename their club to the Jewish um, American Art Club. And then in the 1990s, they um, kind of had another little overhaul and decided to call it the Jewish Americans um, Arts, Artists Club. Uh, Todros Geller passed away in 1949 um, when he was only 59 years old, um, which is actually not that old. And um, it's, it's sad that he passed away a little bit early, but it was nice that he did leave a, a nice legacy in the Chicago area uh, with his own. One thing we do like to talk about when we're uh, talking about this piece here is the WPA, or the Works Project Administration. Um, and you can see, if you get really close, uh, right here there's a little um, plaque on the bottom of the frame here, and it says WPA Federal Art Project. And we have quite a, quite a few, I'd say, uh, artists in our collection that did work with the WPA, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of explain very basically what that is. So if you hear that when you're at a museum or even when you're out and about, you'll, you'll kind of know what people are talking about. So like I said, the WPA was the Works Progress Administration, and um, that was 
brought together um, in 1935. Now, in the 1930s, um, America was going through something called the Great Depression. And this was a time when a lot of people were out of work um, and didn't have a lot of extra spending money for things. Um, so this affected everybody, but it really affected artists, both artists who do visual art, um, 2D things like paintings and printmaking and photography, but also artists who uh, worked in the theater and musicians and writers. Um, because if people all over the United States didn't have a lot of extra spending money, they couldn't, they a lot of times used the money they had to buy food and clothes, um, and they didn't have any extra money to go to a uh, theater or to go to a concert or to purchase a painting or even go to a museum. So um, one part of the Works Project Administration was to get artists who didn't have anybody to buy their stuff or come to their shows or listen to their music, uh, get them up and going again. As part of the uh, WPA's big giant program, um, they did everything from building bridges and roads and different buildings to, like I said, working with artists. So what we're gonna talk about is the artist part of it. And the big um, kind of umbrella that covered all the artists was the Federal Works Project number one. And that, like I said, covered um, artists who painted, um, artists who were actors and dancers, artists who were writers, and it even covered the humanities. So things like historians and people that would kind of um, gather information about the United States. Uh, so it covered all of that. So today we're really, really, really gonna focus in on the um, Federal Arts Project. The Federal Art Project um, covered actually visual artists. So there were other programs that covered, like I said, um, actors and dancers and musicians. But this one just focused on folks who were making uh, visual art that would maybe be in a museum. People that were painters, photographers, and people who drew and did printmaking. Um, and so uh, Tojo Skeller was one of those artists. And um, the program would get those artists and they would have them make things like murals in public places like post office and um, different meeting areas and a lot of times schools. Um, they would also have them create paintings um, and drawings that would go up all over and sometimes even sculpture that would be on the outside of buildings which I think is really cool. So because again the general public a lot of people didn't have the money to purchase this the government gave them money to go ahead and create this and stay employed. That way they had money to feed their families and also help other uh, artists um, uh, keep going. So this program, like I said, um, uh, it funded painting, it funded photography, it funded giant murals, it funded um, outdoor sculpture, indoor sculpture, pretty much anything you can think of that maybe would be in an art museum, this project funded. And the whole thing, the WPA, like I said, started in 1935 and it went to 1943 and they stopped um, the whole program in 1943. And that was really because in 1941, the United States joined World War II. And um, that meant that a lot of people were put back to work. A lot of people were um, in the military and went to work that way. But then a lot of people who were still in the United States working here did things for the military, like building tanks and planes and getting food ready for soldiers and doing all kinds of stuff. So a lot of people who were using the WPA to help them work didn't need that anymore. And um, the economy really rebounded in the 1940s. Um, but from that time, from 1935 to 1943, the WPA and the Federal Arts Project, excuse me, Federal Art Project, um, really did help artists, um, like I said, support their family and make a living. So if you'd like to learn more about the WPA and the Federal Art Project, and uh, of course, Toto Skeller, um, if you get your parents' permission, you can go online and search those. You will find tons of information and all kinds of really cool artists that uh, worked during that time.